Okay, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shah, Bashim Rakakudash, Dumbbell Honest to our apostles and elders to, uh, of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect. All right, I want to uh, do this video real quick, you know, um, and bring out this information that uh, I came across about uh, the symbol which known, is known today as the Unk, okay, and what it represents, uh, why is it being portrayed so heavy in society, okay, and, um, what does the scriptures have to say about what this symbol represents? Okay, so without further ado, I want to go into this, you know, little uh, meme, if you will, or this little information about the uh, the so-called unk, right? It says uh, the unk is known by most people as a sign of everlasting life. It is used for good as well as evil. Just as the upright cross is used for good and the upside down cross is used for evil. It is, it is a symbol of reincarnation of the Egyptian sun god Ra. Okay, now we can just deal with that part right away. Now, it just this information just said that it's used for good and it's used for evil. There ain't nothing good about this symbol, man. All right, first and foremost, it's a symbol that is pushed, all right, by the heathen, okay, by the people that weren't given the law, statutes, and commandments by the people that are not favored by the Heavenly Father, which starting first with the Hamites, okay? The Hamites, the Babylonians, okay? Also, too, you'll find out that the Canaanites pushed this symbol. Also, too, the Philistines pushed this symbol, okay? Which are the uh, ancient Egyptians, uh, the people of Matazarium. That's who pushed this symbol. So there's nothing good about this symbol, Okay? And you so-called blacks and you uh, so-called Hispanics have nothing to do with Africa, man. Okay? You, you are not Africans. You are not, not Hamites. You're, you're not Afro-Latinos. You're, you're not, you're not African-Americans. Okay? You have nothing to do with Africa. So this symbol has nothing to do with you. Okay? Now I'm going to further prove, all right? And another thing is that this symbol has nothing to do with the Bible or the God of the Bible, Okay? It says the unk is also called the crux, ansada, and the tall cross. This is also modern symbol of the female, right? Because essentially, when you rep this sign represents uh, uh, um, uh, the fertility god or um, the queen of heaven worship, the the exaltation of a woman. Okay, which it's all relevant. Okay, why? Because it's a part of prophecy. Why? Because the scriptures tells you what. Let's get that real quick. This is Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 22. How long wilt thou go about, O, black, o thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. You see? And that's what's going on right now. See, the, the woman is being exalted to its highest form in this society. Why? Because America, all right, which is the forefront of all nations on the earth, is pushing forth this uh, queen of heaven spirit, okay? The woman can drive, woman can have a say-so in embassies, and women have a say-so about everything. A woman, she could do whatever a man does. She's driving trucks and all this other stuff, you know? Uh, another way to show that women are being worshipped in this society is that typical, typically uh, somebody that sees two men kissing or, you know, so-called making love and having sexual relations, uh, every everyone, male, male and female, looks at that in disgust. But when you see two females, all of a sudden it's like, ooh, people, people become wooed off of it, man. Especially men, which that shouldn't be so. Why? Because it's a sense of giving women special privileges, man, at the end of the day. At the, and at the end of the day, that's homosexuality, and they both supposed to be put to death. Okay? Point blank, period. Okay, so let's go back. Now, as we see that this symbol, it represents fertility. It represents um, um, uh, 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 a woman, woman worship. Okay, and also too, let me say this because another form of a woman, high woman worship in this society is that you can't talk about a nigga's mama, man. You say anything about their mother, you good as dead, man. You say anything about their father or, or their daddy, whatever, they don't care. They don't have a care in the world. Why? Because they, every 
majority of the people on the earth today believe that they come from their mother. All right? Contrary to popular belief, you come from your father. Okay? Let me get that scripture real quick. All right? This is a... Uh, this is the book of Numbers, chapter 1, verse 18. And they assemble all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declare their pedigrees, meaning their children, right? After their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names from 20 years old and upward by their poles. That's right. So in the ancient world, a man was known by who his father was. Your last name is... Is given to you by who your father is, okay? The 12 tribes of Israel, those names, those families are named after those men who your forefathers are, all right? So women don't bring forth life, okay? Women don't determine the nationality, okay? And one thing I was pondering on through the spirit, all right? If you have been in a household where you have a family with Five, four, three, six different uh, 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 fathers, but they all siblings. You're going to have basically whoever, however many fathers of those children are, you're going to have that many different spirits. Okay? You don't really see those children necessarily getting along as much. They don't look alike. The spirits are completely different. Almost every time. Hell, every time. Salakia. All right? But when you have a, a household which you have the father with different mothers. I mean, yeah, you have a father that has children with by different mothers. The spirit of those children are more so alike. Okay? That's a fact. All right? So, let's go back. It says the unk is also called the crux and sada. And the tall cross, this is also the modern day symbol of a female. That's right. Because uh, 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 Prince used to wear it. You know, they have the other uh, symbol, that's, which is basically upside down to this, which is supposed to be like a male. But it all goes back to this ancient fertility uh, woman, woman worship, man. Okay. A exalting woman. All right. It says the unk. Okay. Or the unk is a symbol of reincarnation of the Egyptian sun god, Ra, or Lucifer, Satan. It is said that in order to worship Ra in his rights, you have to give up your virginity and practice orgies. That's right, because a lot of times you hear brothers that are unlike mine, we always talk about how these celebrities, they be indulging into different uh, uh, sex acts and, and wicked sex acts and different orgies and Making different sacrifices and things of that nature. That's right, because there's nothing new under the sun, man. Okay? There's nothing new under the sun. Okay? Uh, it says, Ra to the Babylonians is Tammuz to the Greeks. And, and Adonis to the Phoenicians, all of them are sun deities. That's right, man. So this whole concept of fertility, all right? This whole concept of sun worship all goes hand in hand. And who was doing that back in the ancient world? Them so-called Africans, them, the, the Hamites, man. All right. Got some scriptures I want to bring out before I go further. Okay. This is Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 14. Then he brought me to the door. This is a vision that the angel was showing the prophet Ezekiel on what the children of Israel were doing. Then he brought me to the door of the gates what they were doing behind closed doors. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, right? This is where the temple was, which was to, toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. That's right, man. That's why when you see, when you go into churches and you see those women, they in the churches crying on their knees, tearing. Why? Because it's nothing new under the sun. They're really worshiping a, 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 a Tammuz, all right? which is the son of Semiramis, which the legend has it, or which we know it's a fairy tale, okay? That what? That she gave birth to Tammuz without uh, uh, having sex. And that's where they intertwine the deities or, or those philosophies, if you will, or should I say, 
of which you had so-called Jesus was born, okay, without a, 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 without a father. And they mixed those two deities, they mixed those two uh, uh, philosophies together and came out with one philosophy. That's why they try to mix that unk with the cross. Okay? Now, another scripture I want to get. This is... Okay, I just went to that one. That was Ezekiel. All right. L let me get this one next. This is Judges chapter 16, verse 23. All right. Here it is in the middle. Right here, I lit it up. It says, then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together. Okay, now nah, I don't want that one just yet. I'm sorry. Right. This is Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 17. See thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the, sit in the streets of Jerusalem. The children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire. And the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. And to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Right. The reason why I brought that out was because the queen of heaven... All right, goes back to Semiramis's and Tammuz. Okay, which basically the children of Israel were following and worshiping those gods of those deities from the Babylonians, from the Greeks, from the Romans. All right, from the Canaanites, from the Philistines. Okay, so there's nothing new under the sun. That's why you have a high flux or influx of our people. Into that symbol. Okay? You see, you got T.I. Alright? You got you got your man uh Meek Mill. Alright? You got uh Rihanna. Okay. Uh, uh Michael Jackson was heavy into it. You can see it in his sleeve, which uh, the Queen of Heaven also, you know, which it all goes hand in hand. It goes as well with Baphomet, which is androgyn which is an androgynous spirit, man. And that's what Michael Jackson was. Okay? You got your man Drake. Yeah, hell, even fucking Elvis. Why? Because the vibration of prosperity is done through the acceptance of other gods. Okay? Yeah, you got your man Wiz Ka Ka Kawifa, <laughs> which is a bum-ass rapper. All right? Your girl Rihanna again. I don't know who this broad is on the left. Okay, your man Kanye and, and Kim Kardashian. All right, Tupac. All uh, Drake again. They all, uh, all look at this demon, you know. It's a uh, hermaphrodite rapping nigga, man. I can't think of his name right now, you know. Y young Thug, man. Okay, here we go. Here's a picture right here. Here's a good one. I don't know who these two cats on the bottom is. One of them looked like fabulous, and one of them looked like a battle rapper as as well. You know. Yeah, well, somebody made the statement. Well, that this is a, a meme somebody put. It says, "Let's be clear. Just because a rapper wears an unk doesn't mean he's conscious. Jesus pieces and crosses don't mix with unks. Well, actually, they do. It's the same thing. Because as you're gonna find out." All right, as you're gonna find out, just like this symbol goes back to Tammuz, so does this this uh 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 uh, uh cross. All right, why? Because that cross basically is a tha or a t, if you will, for Tammuz. Okay, it says Ra to the Babylonians is Tammuz to the Greeks. You see, it's all the same thing. It says and Adonis to the Phoenicians. All of them are sun deities. The unk is the key to everlasting life in the next world. You see how they try to put that together? Because if you worship so-called Jesus, which was born by a virgin birth, they, they say that you're going to receive everlasting life in the next world. 
But they, they meshed it all together, all these doctrines and these philosophies, and our people bottled it up. Why? Because their spirits were uh, subject to these entities and these philosophies back then. It's the same thing through, re through reincarnation. When they come back on earth today, they're basically worshiping the same thing all over again, man. Okay? Now, what I want to do is, I kind of jumped the gun, but I'm going to go back. Let's go back to uh, Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 14. And what I want to do is we're going to go into that word Tammuz and we're going to see how to spell it. All right. So Tammuz. OK. Tammuz is. Uh, Thama was. Tha, ma and a was. Now, if you understand the Hebrew, OK, which I'm not able to pull it up right now. But when you understand the, the Hebrew, when you look at the Tha. The Tha is basically the last character in the Paleo-Hebrew, okay, which which looks like an X or looks like a T or a cross, okay? So when people are walking around with that cross, that symbol, it's basically in the, the, the commemoration of Tammuz, basically the, the worship of the Queen of Heaven, okay? Now check out what this says. It says the unk is the key to everlasting life in the next world, which that's bullshit, man. Okay, because nothing from woman comes everlasting life. In fact, the scripture says through, through women. Okay, let me get that real quick. Salakia, bear with me. Here we go. This is Sirach chapter 25. Sirach chapter 25, verse 24. Of woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. That's right, man. All right? So when you follow the ways and you think that life comes through the ways of a woman, you're looking for death at the end of the day. All right? Now, life, first and foremost, comes by these words, by these scriptures, okay? This is John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the word quickeneth also means to make alive, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life, right? Because when you believe on these words, when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, he came to bring everlasting life. But it was through him. Why? Because the promise went back to him Coming out, the, the Savior coming out of the loins of King David, man. All right? Through, really, through David, that promise was uh, established when you go back to 2 Samuel, the 7th chapter. Okay? And the Lord said that he would build up his kingdom through David's loins. Through the loins of a man. Okay? Another scripture I want to get. This is 1 John chapter 5. How is it at? There it goes. First John chapter 5, we we'll start at 11. And this is the record that the Most High have given to us eternal life. And this is in his, and this life is in his son. He that hath the son have life. And he that hath not the son of the Most High have not life. These things that have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of the Most High, that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of the Most High. Why? Because Jesus is a separate entity. Okay? Jesus really represents Tammuz. Little baby Jesus represents Tammuz. Ceramicus and Tammuz. Okay? Let me see if I can pull that up real quick and get a, a picture of it. All right? I know I'm not going to be able to spell Semiramis is right. I'm going to try it. It'll come up. There we go. See? That's the queen, the queen of heaven. All right? Here we go. 
Semiramis, Nimrod, and you got Tammuz. All this is ancient Babylonian customs and worship. All right? So you got the crescent moon. All right? You got the uh, so-called, uh, you got the, uh, I'll call it a hexagon. So-called five-pointed star. All right? So you got uh, uh, Tammuz, which is supposed to be born during the time of the winter solstice in December. Okay? All this goes hand in hand. All right? The uh, fertility god, man. All right? Let's see if there's another picture. Okay? There's another picture of Ceramus and Tammuz. That, that, here we go again. Okay? There, there we go. This is Ceramus and Tammuz, man. What the world tried to portray... This is the origin. And this is why you have people that are into Egyptology and try to say that the Bible is plagiarized by ancient uh, 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 Egyptian philosophy. When in fact, during the time of the Romans, okay, well, the Holy Roman Empire, you had a man named Constantine, okay, d during the uh, Council of Nicaea, which they intertwined the pagan philosophy, these ancient Babylonian customs, and mixed it with the scriptures. That's why the people today believe that the Bible was plagiarized by ancient Egyptian philosophy. Okay? So now let's go back. I'm going to read something again. This is 1 John 5 and 11. I'm going to read this again. And this is the record. Okay? Hold on, let me start at verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of the Most High have the witness in himself. He that believeth not the Most High have made him a liar because he believeth not the record that the, the Most High gave of his son. What was the record that the Most High gave of his son? That Yahweh Shai, which means he is the deliverer, okay, will be born out of the loins of David. All right? You know, while I'm, I keep mentioning it, let me just go to it. This is uh, 2 Samuel chapter 7. I got to go through it real quick. Right, verse 12, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. And when the days shall be when when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. And he shall be built in house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Okay? Now another scripture I want to get just to back that point up. This is Revelation chapter 22. All right, let me read verse 13. I'm going to jump down. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Okay, I'm going to jump down. Verse 16, it says, I, Yahweh Shai, have sent my angel to, te to, the, to testify unto you these things in the church, churches. I, I am the root. And the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Now let's look at that. Now that's why another reason why they like to intertwine both the Egyptian philosophies and with Yahweh Shai, because Yahweh Shai represented the bright and morning star. That's why the, the Egyptians, what did they worship? The, the uh, sun god Ra. Okay? Which they have nothing to do with each other. The reason why Yahweh Shai called himself the bright and morning star is because he represents the new day, which represents eternal life. Okay, now let's go into it with that word offspring is. All right, because Yahweh Shai, contrary to popular belief, was born from uh, out of uh, Joseph's loins, man. Because Joseph, when you go into the lineage, came through the line of Solomon, and they'll try to tell you, well, he still came through the line of David through Mary, which we read earlier, I believe. Uh, uh, Numbers 1 and 18 said they declared their pedigrees from the line of their fathers, right. Now, Mary, she was not born through the line of Solomon, but she was born through the son, uh, uh, Nathan, which was another son of David as well, 
But the promise was going to go through Solomon, like I just read in 2 Samuel, the seventh chapter. Okay? It says, right, it says, uh, uh, genos for the word offspring, kindred, offspring, family, stock, tribe, nation, nationality, or descended from a particular people. Okay? The uh, uh, aggregate of many individuals of the same nature, kind and sort. See, he's the all, another word for offspring as well, or genos is sperm or seed. Okay. Of course, they're going to go off and say otherwise. All right. Let me see what the word root is. Salakia, just bear with me. The Araza. It says, that which like a root springs from a root, a sprout shoot. What do you shoot? You shoot sperm, man. You shoot offspring. What, what else is known to sprout? It's seeds. So he's basically saying that he's from the seed of David. And that's a part of the record, man. All right. Now, I'm going to go back to that, uh, uh, this picture here. Where it says the unk is the key to everlasting life in the next world, which we just read and found out what is the key to everlasting life to the next world, which is believing on the record of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai in its entirety and having faith in his word that the prophecies are going to come to pass and that you we will be delivered in that day. Okay? It says, This is the cross of Christianity, which Christianity is nothing but a mix. Modern day Christianity is nothing but a mix of Egyptology and the Bible. Okay, the records of the Israelites. Okay, this is the cross of Christianity. This, that, that's how and why Christians changed its symbol, or original symbol, which was a fish to a cross by hanging a dead man on it. Right, now, let's go into, okay, this whole fish thing. Because you see that symbol, okay? You see that symbol, but let's go into what that symbol really represents. Okay? Now, matter of fact, I want to get a uh, depiction of it. Because there's an actual fish god. His name is Dagon. Okay? Which is known in the scriptures. Okay? See, Dagon the fish. All right? You see? Now, let's get it. Let's get him in the scriptures. Just to show you, man, because the records of the scriptures match up with secular records. All right. This is uh Jeremiah. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I want Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter eight, verse 14. Then he brought me to the door of the gate. No, no, wrong one. It was Jeremiah. Salakia. Stay with me. I know I'm kind of all over. This is uh, Jeremiah 7 and 17. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood and their fathers kindle the fire and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out their drink offering unto, their God, unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Right, that's not what I wanted neither. One second, I got it. It's in here. Matter of fact, there we go. It's in Judges. Excuse me, I apologize. Right, Judges chapter 16, verse 23. The lords of the Philistines gathered them together for, to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their God, and to rejoice, for they said, Our God, or their power, have delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. Right? So, let's go into who Dagon is. It says Dagon, which is the word, uh, 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 basically, Dagawan, which means fish. A, Philist a Philistine deity of fertility, see? Another fertility god, represented with the face and hands of a man and the tail of a fish, which we know that they're gods and no gods because the scriptures tell you that uh, uh, every beast is sorted unto his like, okay? You have a, a man that was made to be like a man, and you have fish that were made to be like a fish. There's no intertwining, man, okay? So... That's to show you right there that this cross has nothing to do or the fish symbol even, okay? 
Because when you go into it, they'll try to tell you. See? They'll try to tell you, oh, see, the oh, Jesus and this fish. See, they even got the cross with it and everything. Which this fish goes back to Dagon, man. The scriptures tell you there's nothing new under the sun. Yahweh Shai ain't walking around with a fish symbol, man. Okay? That ain't got nothing to do with Christianity. I mean, that ain't got nothing to do with the following of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. The true uh, Christianity. Which the true Christians were Israelites. It goes back to the ancient deity, the fish god Dagon, man. Okay? So let's go back. It says, this is the cross of Christianity. That's how and why Christians changed its origin, original symbol, which was a fish, that's a lie, to a cross by hanging a dead man on it. He, the wearer, will become a symbol of eternal life as Jesus on the cross. This is the symbol of satanic worship or the sun or the fire god of hell. Okay? Which I don't know about all that, that fire god of hell and all that, which I wouldn't put it past if it doesn't go back to the Titans and the Greek mythology, man. Because it's not, like I said, like I keep saying, there's nothing new under the sun. These philosophies didn't come out of nowhere, man. These philosophies have been going on since the time of Abraham and the church, or the Chaldees, man. Okay? All right? So let me just get a couple more scriptures just to prove that this has nothing to do with the Bible. Okay, bear with me. This is uh, Deuteronomy. I want to get that scripture first. Deuteronomy chapter one, verse, uh, I'm going to start at verse three. And have gone, this is talking about the children of Israel, have gone and served other gods and worshiped them. No, 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 let me start it. Let me start at verse one. Thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy power any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish or any evil favoredness. For that is an abomination to the Lord thy power. If there be found among you within any of thy gates, which the Lord thy power giveth thee, man or woman, that have wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy power, in transgressing his covenant, right, and have gone and served other gods and worshipped them, either sun or moon or any of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded, right, which, what, what is considered the host of heaven? The sun or the stars, Okay, or any of the symbols that goes into horoscopes as well, man. And it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it, and inquire diligently, and behold, it be true, and the thing certain that such abomination is wrought in Israel, then shalt thou bring forth the man or that woman which have committed that wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and thou sh and shalt stone them with stones till they die. So ain't no sun, the sun don't got nothing to do, that's uh, uh, the sun worship, or the sun doesn't have nothing to do with the uh, uh, belief of the Bible, man, the proper understanding of the Bible, man. Okay? Alright? Let's go, this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1, it says, Hear the word, ye the word of the Lord, which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord... Learn not the way of the heathen. Who are the heathen? Those Hamites, those Cushites, those Philistines, those ancient Africans, and any other uh, 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 nation that's not a part of the nation of Israel that worship other gods. It says, thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, right? And be not dismayed. Don't get confused, all right? Don't be astonished at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. Okay? For one cut of a tree out of the forest, the work of, of the hands of the workmen, with the axe, they deck it with silver and with gold, they fasten it with nails, and they hammer it, and they hammers that it move not. Right? This is where you get the concept of the Christmas tree, which goes back to Ceramus and Tammuz, man. And Nimrod. Ancient deities, ancient, ancient customs. That's why you have a host of Jakes, Israelites, so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans all into these worships, man. Going into church, wearing the unk. You got niggas that don't know nothing about no kind of consciousness. They're wearing unks and shit. Why is that? Because their spirits are gravitating to ancient worships and customs. Which is the spirit of this world. Exalting women, man. 
Okay? That's when when you see Christmas trees up in people's homes. You don't see no Christmas trees in bachelor homes. A man that don't deal with no woman like that. But go up in a woman's house. Women always got Christmas trees, man. Why? We do it for the children. We do it. And when, that's when men get into it. Why? Because they do it for women and they do it for children, man. Which is, the, the spirit is no different. Okay? And that's pretty much it on that. All right? Make sure I ain't miss nothing. Okay? Well, that, that's pretty much the point, man. Just like Diana in the book in the book of Acts. They worship the uh uh they worship Diana in Ephesus. They go into that in the book of Acts, man. And it was an uproar in the city. Why? Why is that? Because it was all about woman worship. That's why you see the uh the show Maury. Maury is a prime example, man. You know, the woman, she can come up in there, be the tenth time. She's trying to find who her baby's daddy is. And they clapping her, applauding her. She crying there on the stage. And you got the Edomite Maury, like, yeah, we're gonna find, we're gonna find out who your child is. We're gonna make sure everything is right. And as soon as the 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 fifteenth nigga come out, all of a sudden the crowd, boo, boo. Why? Because it's all about woman worship, man. That woman can do nothing wrong, man. Especially the black woman, man. She can do no wrong, man. All right. And that's the ways and the mentality of this society, man. A woman could burn down a nigga's house, right? Hence, you had Lisa Left Eye Lopez. She burnt down Andre Rising's house, man. There was no charges brought up on that broad, man. She ain't do no time off that shit. Not that I re recollect, you know? But let a man, you know, he put the woman to death like Ray Carruth, for instance. And that nigga's demonized, man. You know? Hey, man. The time is coming where, you know, the woman being on her throne is going to be put down to the ground, man. You daughters of Zion are going to be brought low, man. And you niggas that follow, man. Especially, and man, I blame niggas more than these women, man. Women are like, like children, man. They just going to go with the power. You men out here that exalting women on that kind of level, man, you need a, you need a, a you, you going to die a sinner's death, man. All right? And especially you Israelites, too. That exalt women, man. You got women up in these councils, you know, talking about a elect lady council, you know, exalt. Uh, uh, why do you think Paul had to write that letter to the Corinthians and to Timothy to tell the men not to to put the woman up in some uh, uh, up in authority, man? Why? Because you had Israelites back then doing it, just like you have Israelites back there, back in this time doing it now, putting women over the men. Okay, I'm going to close on that. All right. And with that, all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And our Shalom to the elect. I'm going to give it slack. Let's pull up some pictures, you know, in the meantime and just cut it off.
nigga, breasts. 